Today I have three Halloween DIYs with candy corn theme. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. So for project number one we have a candy corn pumpkin wreath. We're going to start with the wreath form that comes from Dollar Tree, but I believe you can get it other places. This is the one that's dimensional, it's not flat. We're going to take some picks and my choice is going to be black and orange and I think I add some yellow later to match the candy corn. Little burlap leaf came from Dollar Tree, the little wispy piece came from Dollar Tree and this fabric came from Dollar Tree, can you believe it? And it's the perfect size for this form. Alright, so we're going to start by covering our form with this black fabric. Of course we want to remove our tag and then watch how perfectly this piece of fabric fits with this form. I could not believe it when I tried it. Yes! So you can pick any color of that seasonal fabric that you can find at Dollar Tree or you can use a solid felt fabric, whatever you can find. You can even use an old shirt, an old skirt, an old blanket or sheet, whatever you like. So I'm just clipping this and then flipping it over so I can see where I'm going to be needing my glue. I don't have um, arms like an octopus, which would be ideal for this because I could hold everything at one time while I'm gluing, but since I can't, these clips work great and they came from Dollar Tree, they got little silicone tips on them, so they grip really nicely for these projects. All I'm doing is going around the edge and just kind of laying it out where I know I want it to be. Just like this, and then we'll trim off that excess in a bit, but for now I'm just going to put it where I know I want it to be, and then we're going to work with one section at a time. So I'm going to unclip the section on the side first, using my cool temperature setting on my gun, because you do not want this to run off of that wire. If you use a high temp, it's going to fall off the wire. We don't want that to happen. We need a little time to be able to adjust that fabric to fold it over the edge. So you having that cooler temperature glue is going to work better for that. Then I'm going to go to the other side and then attach that side down. See how that bead sits right on top? That's perfect. That's what we want. I'm not going to stretch it too hard because if you stretch too hard, these uh, frames will bend and I don't want to change the shape of this pumpkin. So I'm just going to follow the natural form and wrap around the edges. I'm going to continue to do that all the way around this pumpkin. I'm going to do a little bit at a time. So I've done both sides. Now I'm going to go to the bottom. And you get the idea here folding it over, squeezing it down so that the glue goes on both pieces of fabric and on the wire form. So we're going to continue around like this. I wanted to let y'all know guys, this is a little hidden giveaway. I'm having a 5,000 subscriber giveaway, so if you haven't subscribed, be sure that you do that. I'll be giving you more details later on that, but I can tell you that the giveaway is going to be a box full of goodies. Things that I have thrifted for crafting, things that I've picked up from Dollar Tree, extras, um, there'll be ribbons, probably transfers in there, maybe fabric, tools, paints, all kinds of things. So when we get to 5,000 subscribers we're going to have a giveaway. Stay tuned so you'll know what to do. Okay, so when we get up to the stem and we've gotten everything else glued down, I'm just going to clip there around the stem so that I can trim off everything and still have a little bit on the top to work with. We're going to do that in just a second. Sharp scissors really do help. I've heard that you can sharpen your scissors by cutting on a piece of sandpaper or cutting on aluminum foil. Now, do your own investigating to see. I don't want anybody to ruin their good scissors, but I have used it on sandpaper before on my scissors, and it works great. So try that at your own risk. All right, so just around the top here, now I have this little flap for the top of my pumpkin. It isn't the perfect fit, but it'll work for what I need. I'm just going to fold it over. You can see I'm a little bit out of camera range, and I apologize for that. I think I've gotten much better. 
if you've watched my videos from the beginning, I've gotten much better about trying to stay where you can see me. But, you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, things happen. All right, now well, there's a bunch of different types of ribbons that you can use. Whatever you want to use to trim yours out, you can. I just tried a few different types. I like this particular ribbon because it's wide enough that I can put glue on it and put it right down the center of those wire pieces without any glue coming out the sides. If you use a very thin strip, you might have an issue with glue um, seeping through. And I'm, I'm always striving to make a high-end look, and I want to show you how to do um, those little extra things to give you a high-end look. So we're going to stop, start at the top, right beside the stem on that first ring, and you can almost see through the fabric here, so you can see it. Um, and you just want to lay that down and add a little bit of glue as you go. You don't have to put a whole string of glue there unless you just want. I found that with the cooler temperatures, when you put a dot and then pull down to another dot, you pretty much get a little stream anyway. It's just like a little string, but it's plenty to hold that ribbon in place. Then nothing will show through. There'll be no bulk from the glue underneath, and you'll get a nice smooth appearance, and that's what we want. So we're going to go down just like this. Going to flip it over, add some glue on the underneath section, and then press it down. And then trim off right there. So the ends are on the back side, and it's nice and smooth. Going to show you again. We're going to start here, a little bit of glue. Press it down and squeeze it to the back. Some of the glue goes to the back of the form. You can see the little, little string, little spider web of glue between the dots, and that's perfect for this. Gonna add some glue here, flip it over, little dot of glue on the back, squeeze it down, and trim it off. Be sure you use those clamps when you need them. All right, this is it when it's completely finished on the base of the pumpkin. Now we're gonna use a little bit of this burlap. Use whatever you have. This really doesn't show too much in the end with the design that I use, but whatever you decide you wanna use, you could wrap with ribbon or burlap or jute, um, or leave it just like it is, whichever way you wanna do it. But I like this black burlap, so I'm gonna add this to the top. And it's this particular burlap, I'm just gonna be honest, I can't remember where I got it from, but it is ridiculous to work with. It is really, it's, it's, I can't, I can't. So it's best that I use it up, right? Why not use it on a place where it really doesn't show that much? It frays, it comes apart, and it has that white backing. Um, I just, I can't. Anywho, moving along. So now we're gonna make a little swag for the top. And here we have this nice and glittery pick from Dollar Tree. I think it's called Willow, I'm not sure. But they have these in a couple of different colors this year. And I'm going to take my thrifted oak picks and just lay those around to see where I want them to be. And you can see that I've left an open spot in the middle and then we have similar sides. I'm going to say similar. They're definitely not identical and I'm not trying to make them identical. Using a black zip tie, which also came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cinch those down really tightly. I do, by the way, glue that leaf back on and decide where I want to put it. Look at this. Ugh, the fallout. It's horrific. Ah! Okay. Now, you've seen me make this. If you've seen uh, my last, let's see, which video did I do where I made all these little things? Oh, yes. It was a Halloween, vintage Halloween video. I'm going to take this and wrap it 20 times around my hand. These are pieces of raffia, a black. If I'd had a white, I would have added that in there, but I did not have any white. I'm not even sure they make white. Tie it in the center right here with some jute and a double knot, trim it off. I'm going to press it down so that I can see where the center would be, and I'm gonna cut right through that center there. This is similar to what you would do with making a tassel, but we're not gonna make a tassel. This is going to almost be like a flower or a little pile of hay or straw. It's just really cute looking to me and it looks rustic and it reminds me of, I think I've said it before, but it just reminds me of something carnival-like. I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna wrap that around. It's convenient to have that jute long enough that you can use it to tie. And I don't cut that stuff off until the end, that way I can use it if I need to. I'm gonna fluff it out a little bit. It's a nice little filler. I think it gives some 
great color there amongst all the black okay now I'm gonna take this burlap leaf I think this is a maple leaf really doesn't matter it's orange and it looks good here it's gonna break up some of that black I'm gonna press it in with that long little wire piece on the back and then just kind of fluff that other stuff over the top I've got a variety of gold and yellow flowers here I also have an orange flower that you'll see in a second these two branches are thrifted and they are identical so I'm gonna pull the same branch off with a some little hmm, the same little pick part off of each branch do you see what I'm saying yeah they're identical and I'm gonna put one on each side and then fluff it around a little bit to get it where I want it um, I didn't have to use glue because this fits right down in the other stems from the other picks which makes it great but feel free if you're gonna hang it outside where it might get some wind and weather that you would you know go ahead and use a little hot glue there but I don't need it for that because it's gonna be indoors look at this beautiful orange thrifted flower love it rather than shoving that down in that pick which is already pretty tight I'm just gonna use a little hot glue on the back and this is still my cool temp I'm enjoying using the cool temp actually and then I'm going to put my flower right down in there I'm just gonna press it down for a minute until that glue has a chance to sit up so now we have a beautiful floral spray for the top of our pumpkin love it but we're not done yet we're not done yet okay so I'm gonna take that jute I'm gonna wrap it around that wire frame and then tie it off just like that trim it down and then a little hot glue to keep that knot from slipping once it's cool you can flip it over so you don't glue it to your table and I need a hanger so right in the top there's a piece of the wire that is still um, easy to expose underneath the burlap so I just press it down a little bit and then wrap a piece of that coordinating ribbon the same ribbon to make a hanger just like that and I'm gonna cut this at a slant because I want the knot to be at the top I like I like the look of that so that's what we got so far but we have one more thing we're gonna add but you can stop there if you like okay so the icing on the cake Dollar Tree has these cute little signs I was lucky enough to get two packs and they're different the signs are shaped differently it's gonna fit nicely on the sign I think so I'm going to just take my little tie here go right underneath my swag and then attach it down and then trim it off it's hanging from a wire so you really could adjust that up to make it shorter or down to make it longer but I love the look of this what do you think okay now number two candy corn pumpkin sign I am going to be featuring some of plaid's products I am glad to say that I am an ambassador for plaid and they sent me a bunch of goodies three paints here are the candy corn colors I have chosen and then a pack of brushes this came from them as well this is a sign that I printed off a few years ago believe it or not I hung on to it because I like the font and then this pumpkin that came from Dollar Tree but we're gonna use the back alright I'm gonna put some paper towels down here to just protect my surface and cut the hanger off of my pumpkin I'm gonna start with a flat brush I love painting with these brushes that's so soft and it gives such a nice stroke really like these thank you plaid I appreciate so much all the wonderful goodies I got okay so we're gonna start off with this beautiful yellow I'm gonna put this on the bottom and this is almost gonna be like an ombre effect um, I'm still working on my technique so forgive me this is for inspiration guys this is definitely not gonna be perfect and you'll see what I mean in a in a bit so if you're somebody who crafts and then you get disappointed in yourself because it doesn't turn out quite like you wanted it to oh just watch what happens to me and be inspired that you know we can always try harder and we can learn from our mistakes next we're gonna take this beautiful orange I believe this is pumpkin orange or harvest orange it's gorgeous though 
I'll put the colors uh, in the description box for you. All right, so the same brush with the yellow on it. I'm just going to go up and start blending a little bit of that orange into the yellow. You can see it's kind of smeary looking. Okay, so this is where it goes wrong. I put the white on and forget to change brushes. Now, with white paint, it's... Mm, I should have just used a different brush because now I have a mess. And I will tell you that I had to keep adding it. Then I had to let it dry and add two more coats just to get the white right. Mm -hmm. And my line is not straight. And it doesn't matter that much until you get ready to put words. Ugh! Then it's a mess. So we're going to let that disaster dry. And we're going to go on to our light up scarecrow box. We're going to take this little sign from Dollar Tree. It's a triangle. Any type of little chipboard or wooden or whatever embellishment that you have. Any type of little guys. And then a napkin. This is just a paper napkin. I'm going to take this tag off the back because it's... Well, it doesn't look good there and we're not many pearls. So we're going to take that right off. Sometimes they come off easily. Sometimes they do not. Just going to do the best I can with this. The struggle is real. With these signs, you can press the back right out. Just like that. And sometimes, just like today, it'll peel off nicely. Sometimes it will not. If it doesn't, slap some chalk paint on it, put it underneath the dryer, and call it a day. But look at that. Perfection. Love it. All right, then be sure you clean up your frame as well because we want a nice, clean form to work with. That stuff will come off of there pretty easy. If not, just go ahead and get you a emery board or sanding block and just smooth that down. All right, so I know that I'm going to use this napkin on here, and I want to show you what you can do to separate your layers because I know for a lot of people, they don't, they say they can't get their two layers apart. If you tear above those little dots, if you notice the napkins have little dots on them, tear just above it, then your layers will come apart. Those little dots actually hold those layers together. So carefully, carefully, so you see there, you can get that to come apart and then very carefully go around and pull those areas loose. And then you have a one ply piece to work with. And that's easier. If you use two plies, in my opinion, that's when you're gonna get the wrinkles. Okay, another plaid product. I'm gonna put a little Mod Podge in the little cup beside me, but you can certainly use just put it right down on top of your project. The reason I did it this way, and I'm using a new brush, is that I wanna get a nice, even, light coat. I don't wanna to put too much on there and then not be able to take it off. So just using a little cup will help me get that light, light coat on there. I want a light coat because I have some things that I wanna do with this project quickly so that you guys can see it. But you can use a heavier coat if that's what you like. I'm just using my hands to press the wrinkles out of the napkin now. There's, there's some lines, some fold lines in there that we want to take out. So I'm just kind of gently pressing that out. I've learned how much pressure I can use with these napkins and with tissue paper. You have to kind of learn those. So I'm going to line these up. I don't want my dots, the napkin dots as we discussed, to show. So I'm just going to put it down where it's centered. This little tool here. I'm going to gently, gently, gently use this little rubber tool to press out my wrinkles and lines. Now, this is a faster speed. You would not do it this fast. Normally, um, you might tear something, so you don't want to do that. But go ahead and get that nice and neat. Work from the center outwards. So you can get all, you can press all those wrinkles and any other problems out to the edge. Now, because I used a light layer of that Mod Podge, I can gently tear away my edges without worrying about my paper coming apart or sliding off. I'm just going to, where I have pressed down on the edges, I'm just going to gently pull that paper away. I'm not trying to tear it. I'm just kind of pulling off where it will give naturally. Then I'm pressing my edges back down to make sure nothing comes loose. Just pressing those down. Then I'm going to take my sanding block, which is a nice foam block that comes from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use that to just shear that off on the edges. Gently, downward, and away. So there we go. You can see how we're doing that. 
all the way down. You're just going to follow your line all the way down. And there you go. Nice finished edge. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you as part of my family. Our YouTube channel is growing. Okay, so we're going to put the backing back on our triangle. Just like so. A little bit of glue comes out. Not a problem. We're going to press it down and just it'll just kind of ball up and roll off. Get that stuff off of there. You don't want that showing in your final project. We want a high-end look. So I've chosen the Scarecrow. I think when I saw the Scarecrow, I actually thought, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'll show you the little theme with the Scarecrow. Now, I don't like everything laying flat. You know that if you've watched my videos. I, I just like a little dimension. It's just more interesting in my opinion. I'm going to use some of these little... I don't know if they're like cardboard or what, but they came from Dar Target originally. I happen to have gotten mine from Dirt Cheap. And you can just, I'm kind of getting an idea how I want this to be because I want this to look like a pumpkin patch. If you want to show me some love, do you know you can buy me a coffee? See the link in the description box below. Thank you. All right, I've got some of this. I think this is called Creepy Cloth that you get at Dollar Tree. And I've just kind of, made a mess of it and I'm cutting it off and I'm gonna use it on the bottom sort of like straw or like you know when you've been in a field and everything's been harvested and you've got all that extra stuff out there well that's how we want this to look and it's a little creepy you know creepy cloth now we need to decide where the scarecrow is going to go I think I like him there but there needs to be a little more something so we're gonna put this pumpkin flat down I'm going to put hot glue on it, that's what you're not seeing, and I'm going to place it down, pressing it down a little bit into that little, our little air quote hay on the bottom. I'm going to layer my cute little scarecrow on that. I'm going to put two of those blocks together and then glue them down so they're up even higher toward the front. I'm going to put a pumpkin with a little hot glue right there so you can see my scarecrow is already hiding in the pumpkin patch just like that then I'm gonna take a pumpkin on the outside of the box right here making sure that he doesn't hang down to interfere with it standing up so be sure that you got your edges correct and then a little hot glue here for another orange pumpkin and look at all that depth and dimension is that not the cutest but wait it gets even better we're gonna put a light in there that's right we're gonna put a light down there okay so the problem I had was this little candle light from Dollar Tree is a little bit thick and it doesn't want to go in there but there was a happy accident as you can see right there it came apart it's actually almost flat without that top case and it still works so check this out uh-huh what about that that's cute isn't it oh I love it I did one for Christmas like a light up Christmas box that turned out so cute okay so now we're back to our dried pumpkin I'm going to go around the edges of this pumpkin and between the layers of paint with my little sanding block. I want to rough it up just a little bit and obviously the paint job is not perfect so I want it to almost look like it was intentionally done that way. I'm working hard to make this thing work. I'm really working hard. I didn't want to scrap it though because I knew it would turn out nice and I want it to be for inspiration for you so again not perfect but hey we're going to go with it. So, I'm going to use some carbon paper. I got this at the thrift store. I'm going to cut a piece of it to fit on the back and then tape it down. This way it won't slide all over the place and I'll get it exactly where I need it on the words. Okay. I haven't used carbon paper since I was a child, so let's see how this works. I'm going to place it over the pumpkin and try to find what I think would be the center of the pumpkin. You can certainly measure or cut that top paper down if you, you know, use a printable that is large like this. And by the way, if you go over to my Pinterest at making it my own one, you can find lots of free printables. So click on the free printables and I put a lot of things there that you can look at. Um, they're not my printables, they belong to other people. I've just made a board to make it easier for you guys. So you can go over there and choose something and print it out so you can make your own. 
Now I'm tracing over every bit of this. I'm going to do all of the little swirly designs, the lines under it, and all of the words on here. I'm trying not to press down too hard. Okay, there we go. How's that? Turned out pretty good. I think that's a really good transfer, especially for it being my first time in a very long time. But you see the problem here? Trick or treat is centered, but my lines between the paint are not. So we're going to go with this imperfection. We're just, we're just going to go with it. It's driving me nuts, but we're going to go with it. Now you're just going to take some type of a paint pen or maybe even a Sharpie, whatever you choose. These are acrylic paints, so they're fairly easy to go over. Um, they don't eat away the paint, sort of like if you use chalk paint. If you've ever done that and tried to use a paint pen, sometimes you have to keep tapping it to get the, the uh, paint to come down. This is not a problem with these acrylic paints. So I'm just going to trace over with my paint pen, and I have the, well, they're paint markers. I have a thin and a thick, and I'm just going to use them accordingly. I'm going to first outline my letters before I paint them. I'm trying to use a level even hand here and you want to be sure that you're not dragging your hand through where you're painting so just turn your pumpkin whichever way you need to to keep your hands and your wrist out of those areas so now I'm just going to color in all of my text just like this I cannot remember where I got this printable originally so I'm, I'm sorry about that but you can find something that's comparable okay so it's driving me nuts here but, you know, okay. I'll try not to obsess. We're going to go over those little holes there, which I should have done in the beginning, but I forgot. And we're just going to put a little bit of that drywall putty in there. And then using my silicone, I'm just smoothing it off. It'll dry and uh, it'll be fine. You won't be able to notice it very much. But so this is kind of crooked. So this is what I do. Uh, I go in there and try to fix it. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but I thought, oh, well, maybe I can fix this. But no, because you know why? All of those letters are in the way. So I'd have to go in there and try to go between all of the letters. And then I just thought, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm not even going to be bothered by it. <laughs> so to distract from my errors, I'm going to make a very pretty little bow to go on the top. I've chosen three different coordinating ribbons, and I'm going to use four stacks of those. They are five inches. And I'm going to make a little messy bow. You can see what I'm doing right here. I am just crisscrossing. When you have an odd number, it's easy to just stagger these out. If you have an even number, it's a little different, but whatever, you know. If you're not obsessive about patterns like I am, then you won't have to worry about that. <laughs> Some things just bug me. Okay, so I'm going to use a ribbon to tie the center. Just like this. I'm pulling and adjusting to make sure that I have pretty much the right length so that I don't have to do too much trimming in the end. Just making sure they're in the center. And then I'm going to slowly pull that knot. I don't want my ribbons to line back up again. I want them to, to stay in that X pattern. So little double knots here. Then you can go through with your scissors and trim the edges if you would like. You can dovetail if you want to. You can cut them at a slant if you want to. Whatever you want to use. Hey, if you want to use these, you got a good quality ribbon and they're not going to fray, you can use them just exactly how you cut them originally. And you can skip this step. But for me, I'm going to cut them at a slant. All right, we're going to use that same ribbon. Flip it over, tie it, just like that. And by the way, you can use any pumpkin form you find at Dollar Tree or wherever else for that matter. Anything will work. A little hot glue to make sure that doesn't slip up that stem because it'll fall if it does. And then I'm just going to try to sand over here. Sand over my words to make them blend a little bit better. And I think I did somewhat fix my line there. Somewhat. But I'm going to go back over everything, kind of dull out that black. It's a little too dark there. See, I'm sanding in between, trying to ombre out my little colors, kind of smear them into one another. And originally, I was going to put this on a backing, but I decided against it. Okay, so here's the reveal. 
I'll be getting some new backdrops soon. A company is sending me four new backdrops, so I'll be asking your opinions on those too when I try those out. I'm so excited. So here are our three projects. Here's our beautiful candy corn pumpkin. And then we have our little scarecrow light up pumpkin patch. Cutie, cutie. And then here is the little sign. You can lean the sign or if you want to make a hanger with it, you can certainly do that. That says trick or treat. What about that? There's a light up jar in the back. I did a project on that. That was fun. Which one of these will you be trying? I'm having so much fun with Halloween. Are you doing your Halloween projects now? We're not gonna have very many more of these Halloween videos before we'll be moving on to fall. Once again, I'm so happy that you stopped by my channel, that you leave me love and support, and I hope to see you again very soon.